but database administrators primarily responsible for the database server and all the databases on them. This includes security, providing access to the server and specific databases, as well as disaster recovery, which means having processes in place for backing up your databases and plans in place for restoring those databases if something were to go wrong. In this nugget, we're going to take a look at how both of these work in SQL Server. Let's begin with security. Now, security works very similar across all these database platforms. The concepts are the same. We create users and we provide users with permissions to access specific database objects. The implementation and the tools, of course, are going to be a little bit different. Here's how it works in SQL Server. We have two levels of users. We have server level users, and these are usually going to be your IT staff, your administrative team that will be working at the server level with server level objects. We create these logins and then we can associate them with server roles. These are just containers for a predefined set of permissions. There are built-in server roles, such as sysadmin, whoever's associated with that role is essentially God on the system. And then you can also create custom server roles and attach your own permissions to them. We also have database users, otherwise known as principals. That's the official term. Anything that you can assign permissions to is known as a principal. But these are scoped at the database level. There's also database roles. There's built-in database roles. For example, there's DB Data Writer. Anybody associated with that role can write data to objects in the database. There's DB Data Reader. Anybody associated with that can read data, and you can create your own custom roles and, again, attach database-level permissions to them. Anybody associated with that role will automatically assume those positions. Permissions, not positions. <laughs> and by the way, you can also assign permissions not only at the database role level, but also at the user and login level. Database roles are preferred because they simplify management. If you assign permissions at the individual user login level, then you're opening yourself up for a potential management nightmare down the road because that is a lot of permissions to manage. But at the role level, we can easily do it in mass. Plus, a lot of users share job roles. So we can create database roles based on departments, for example, and then all of the users associated with that department will be placed in that role and we'll only need to assign permissions at the role level. Now we assign permissions to all of these things against database objects like tables, views, stored procedures, and functions. And usually we assign them DML, DDL, and DCL permissions. For example, we give them the ability to select, insert, update, or delete against tables, create, alter, drop against stored procedures. We can also simplify all of that by utilizing a schema, which in the world of SQL Server is just simply a container for database objects. It simplifies permission assignment to a group of objects, very much like database roles work for database users and server roles work for server logins. Now, schema is kind of a loaded term because in database theory, schema actually means the structure or the model or the design of our database. In SQL Server, it means that too. It's just that we also have a database object called schema that is, again, acts as a container for database objects that we can use to simplify permission assignment against. So that's security and specifically SQL Server security in a nutshell. Now let's jump onto our database server so I can show you how to back up and restore a database. So what we're going to do here is back up the database that we designed and created in our previous nuggets called MyDB. Here it is. So let's take a database backup. Very simple to do using the graphical user interface here. We give it a right click, head down here to tasks and over to backup. From here you can specify your database and your location where it will get backed up to. This is the default location and I'll leave it right there. Notice here it's MyDB.back. We hit OK, and that's it. It took a backup. We didn't have a lot of data in there, so it didn't take very long. But now we have a backup of this database. And if something were to go wrong with that database, like we lost all the data in it or became corrupted, we could easily restore it to the point in time that we backed it up. This is why database administrators take frequent backups, often multiple times a day and sometimes even multiple times in an hour, because you can only ever recover a database to the point in time that you took your last backup. This is also why most database management systems have tools like this guy right here in SQL Server called SQL Server Agent. This allows us to create jobs to automate the process of backing up our databases frequently. So tools and components like this are a DBA's best friend. Now let's blow away this database. Let's delete it entirely. Uh-oh, it's gone. But that's okay. We can recover it because we took a backup. Here's how we do that. We can right click on databases, choose to restore database, and all we need to do here is browse to that backup, which lives on the file system here in the default location where SQL Server stores them. There it is, mydb.back. We can hit OK, 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 
and that's all there is to it. There wasn't a lot of data in there. That's why it was so quick. That restored everything inside of this database. All of our tables are there. Our data still exists within those tables, as well as any objects associated with that database. In this CBT nugget, you got a taste of what database administration is all about by looking at the two primary responsibilities of a DBA, security and disaster recovery. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.